And today, we're going to be going all over the city asking these multi-millionaires from seven to eight and even nine-figure entrepreneurs how they became wealthy and how you can start your path to becoming financially free. And with that being said, let's get this video on the way. Have you ever been broke before? <laughs> As a joke. Bro, God, you kidding me? This guy right here, I slept in my car at one point in my life. You no, know, they didn't have money at all. I mean, I mean, literally, it was just that nasty. I came from a very humble beginning as a kid growing up in Africa. That passed away when I was seven years old. Three meals a day was a struggle. Holes in my shoes as a kid, I remember like yesterday. Broke as hell. But what I want to tell you is this. Being broke is a temporary condition. It really is. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Lord have mercy. Close to two mil. Two million dollars. Yes. Are you a buyer or a seller? Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's a good one. I sell all day. So, okay, watch this. Are you ready? There are two types of people against society. Consumers and what? Producers. Consumer consume. Producers produce. Who makes the most money? Producers. The producers. Are you following me so far on this? Yeah. Three things. My mentor tells me this and it stays. Number one, fall in love with people. Number two, fall in love with sales. Number three, fall in love with numbers. You do those three things, nobody's going to recognize. You're going to go back and watch this tape a few years from now like, damn. What's the best advice that you would tell the younger generation today? Make speed work to your favor because you're young, but you're not forever young. You don't procrastinate anymore because procrastination is the assassination of all destination. You do not procrastinate. And we're just talking about how there are two types of people, right? Givers and takers, right? Life take from takers and give to givers and keep very accurate accounting. You can cheat it. Give them one last deep quote to really stick with them going forward. That says, this one stays with me forever and ever and ever. Work like it's up to you and pray like it's up to God. That's my best quote ever. So in other words, go to work with every fiber of your being, every soul, every part of your body. Go all in. But then you're only one person. Then you have to pray to God, your creator, to make all your dreams become a reality. Right. So work like it's up to you and pray like it's up to God. Thomas, that was phenomenal. Okay, uh, I guess like what industry did you decide to pursue a career in? You know what, I uh, grew up in the tech business. In the tech business? In the tech business, and yeah. how long have you been in tech for? I uh, had two tech companies that I ran for like 10 years. Yeah. And then I sold both. Yeah. And now I'm enjoying life in Miami. And how much did you sell the companies for? A fair amount. Yeah? Yep. You say like eight figures? Eight figures. Eight yep. figures. Could you park? Can we ask you a couple questions outside of the car? Is that uh, cool? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. How can somebody break into the tech industry in 2024? You know, tech business is tough. You got to always innovate and you got to be one step and, and everything is about speed to market because when you come up with an idea, tomorrow somebody else will come up with it. So you got to go fast. And how long have yep. you been an entrepreneur for? All my life. All your yeah. life. What's the greatest lesson about entrepreneurship you learned that you pass on to someone about to start their first business in 2024? Great people. You got to have great people. Yeah. Everything, every business surrounds great people, people that are smart, people that are committed, people that want to be in startups, because you really dedicate your life to it. Right. It's 24-7. Have you ever been broke before? You know what? Every entrepreneur reaches that point. So right. I wouldn't say broke, but financially challenged, yes. Yeah. What's the best financial advice that you ever received from a mentor throughout your lifetime? If there's a lesson about yeah. money that somebody taught you, what would that advice be? Be well capitalized. Well in capitalized. tech, you got to have funding. So have good partners, have smart money. Smart money always goes a long ways than just normal money. What is the best industry people should get into in 2024? Best industry tech AI the world is changing with AI software and, and if you have the knowledge that that is a space to be in right now thank you so yeah. much for your time right. so Cheers. I really appreciate that thank have you. a great day sir right. thank you so we were just walking around Miami Beach and I caught my guy driving around in the Ferrari you know I had to stop him for some game and it turns out he sold two tech companies for multiple eight figures and he just dropped some serious game how you can break into the tech industry in 2024 but I love what he said the most important thing that helped him throughout his career was people at the end of the day if you want to go fast go by yourself but if you want to go further go with people together. Great interview. Let's go get this next one. Have you ever been broke before? You know that I came to the States when I was 20 years old, almost 17 years ago, with $78 in cash and I didn't speak any English. It's very empowering and I'm proud of what I've done. Looking back, I would do it all over again, thousand times. So you came here with $78? Yes. How much money do you make in a year now? It's about $2 million annually. Where are you from? I'm from Russia. What's your favorite part about being a business owner in the United States? Freedom. That's what I work for. I never really cared about about a month of money to be honest with you and that's not what I'm here for. I grew up pretty poor so it's it's you know I just don't want that for my children and in myself. Among yourself and the most successful people that you know what's that one trait that they all have in common? They don't complain. They're always on top of solution. What is the solution? What is it that I can do better? So they don't sit there in self-pity and cry. That's the one thing that I notice about people that are very very successful. Entitlement
consent is what's gonna kill you at the end, by the way. Nobody's coming to save you, that's for sure. How old are you now? I'm 36. And how old were you when you became a millionaire? About six years ago was my first million. If you were to go back and have a conversation with your 20-year-old self, what's that advice that you'd give to your younger self? Don't listen to people that don't have things that you want. Ignore the noise. When I was 24, everybody and their mother told me, don't, what, lashes, what is lashes? Don't do it. You know, it's, it, 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 was, it was crazy to a lot of people. I just got a, kind of a obsessed with getting better in what I do. I really wanted to be the best lash artist that there is. It was like a, a sick thing I would wake up with every single day. And even though it seems crazy to everybody else, it's going to work. Her story was amazing, you guys. She moved to the United States over 15 years ago with only $78 in her bank account. She turned that into a business that's now doing $2 million every single year. But my favorite part about that interview was when I asked her what the most successful people have in common. And she said that it's that they don't complain or feel entitled to the success that they ultimately achieve. At the end of the day, what you want out of life is dependent on the work that you're willing to put in. So take notes from that interview and apply it. But with that being said, let's go get this next interview. All right, you guys, my guy just pulled up in a Lamborghini years out here in Miami, Florida. I'm going to go up and see what he was able to do to be able to afford a Lamborghini. Let's see what he has to say. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Quick question for you, man. You is this your Lamborghini? Absolutely. And yes, what do you sir. do for a living to be able to afford a Lamborghini out here in Miami, Florida? I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I own a few different companies, but my main company is a marketing agency, which kind of feeds all of the other companies, like an ecosystem that I have. Yeah. And I guess, like, how long have you been a business owner for? 22 months exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this so month. Just about two years. Yeah, two years. And over these last two years, what's been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Last year was my first full year. Uh, we did 5.5 .5 million uh, between all of the companies, but 2.4 million net, which is yeah. what I truly cared about. And this year, we're trying to absolutely double that. That's incredible, man. Have you ever been broke before? I've been broke a few times, man. Uh, I had a clothing store in a barber shop when I was 18 with a business partner of mine. He was selling drugs, went into depression, lost my clothing store, lost my barber shop, had to start over yeah. selling phones out of a kiosk for Sprint. Started investing in real estate, bought the nicest houses in the nicest neighborhoods, made them look the best, lost a lot of money in real estate. So then I had to start all over and that's ended up what, what got me into uh, insurance because yeah. I figured out that it was an unlimited earning uh, potential vehicle. As a multiple seven figure entrepreneur, what's been the best financial advice that you ever received? throughout your lifetime. Best advice I got was from a billionaire and I wasn't even able to get a conversation with him until I started putting up some real numbers and I was on his private jet and he looked at me and said, Eric, you know, I've heard a lot about your life. You got a sad story and now people care about it because you actually have success. But what you need to understand is anything and everything that happens to you might not be your fault, but it is your problem and eventually you have to solve that problem or you're going to continue being broke the rest of your life. So as soon as you understand that it is your responsibility and you have a mirror every day you look at when you get up in the morning, you're brushing your teeth, that's your accountability mirror. You need to speak to yourself and you need to speak life into yourself because your belief system also matters. If you don't believe you're going to be worth eight figures, you're never going to touch eight figures. If you were to go back two years ago when you were first starting your business, what's the number one thing that you would have told yourself? Stop fucking listening to everybody else, man. I, you know, I, I started getting everybody's opinion on what I should do, how I should build my business, but nobody had a dream as big as mine and nobody was truly trying to create what I was creating. So I started listening to my gut, man. Gut intelligence is so important, guys. If you do not listen to your gut and you start listening to everybody's opinions, you're going to end up like everybody. So I promise you, please listen to your own gut. And What's the most common mistake that people make that keeps them broke in today's world? Money management and time management. Once they're an entrepreneur, they think they don't have to come to work. They think, oh, 8 a.m., no, I, I'm self-employed. I'm a business owner. I don't need to come into work at 8 a.m. Not realizing 8 a.m. is when you can legally start prospecting and nothing else matters. You can be the most talented sales individual in the world, but if you do not prospect and you do not establish relationships, you will never be able to use your actual talents in terms of selling, especially as an entrepreneur. So we just put up on my guy in the Lamborghini years, man, and he just dropped some great game for you guys. He became a millionaire at 32 because his business did $5 million this last year. But what did he say his billionaire mentor told him? No matter what you're going through, no matter what problem you have, it may not be your fault, but it is still your problem. So it's up to you to find a way to solve it. Great interview, man. Let's go get this next one. All right, you guys, I got a very special surprise for you right now. We're at a $15 million mansion out here in Miami, Florida. We're going to go up and find out what they were able to do to put themselves here. Let's see what they have to say. Everybody who's been dying to know, they want to know what you do for a living to be able to afford this place out in Miami. I'm an orthodontist, fixed teeth. What's been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Oh, man multiple millions and it's going back into real estate and shopping centers and kind of like growing from there. So like seven figures? Easily. Yeah. Eight figures? Or yes. Eight figures? Yeah. yeah. Now what is the secret to creating wealth in real estate? Like there's a big misconception that you have to have a ton of money to start creating wealth. But like what's been your secret to creating wealth in real estate? This is how I create wealth in real estate. I focus on my practices that grow. That gives me the cash flow. So I don't really need outside investors. I can put that cash flow right into like shopping centers and medical buildings and then the next year keep on doing the same thing as those properties get cash flow as well. Now, this is a $15 million spot right here. Did you go to college? Of course. You went to college? Yes. Do you think a college degree is necessary to be successful in today's society? I mean, I'm old school and conservative a little bit, but I, yeah, I think uh, college, even higher learning is going to help you get into like the bigger, bigger stuff. What do you mean 
my bigger stuff. Your core business that you developed yourself as a doctor or an attorney and now that you can grow it multiple ways without like a lot of barriers to entry because it's not easy. I went to dental school and orthodontic school so that was 11 years and a lot of people are not going to go through 11 years of school. What's one lesson about business that you would give to somebody that they will not learn in school? I think, you know, I, I'm into like shopping centers now and the last two deals I did, I got directly in front of the owner, the seller, and uh, he liked me and uh, people want to work with people that they like. So I think if you can be personable and likable, people want to do business with people they like. I'm oh, in. All right, you guys, my guy just landed in a private jet and he's off. I'm going to go up and see what he was able to do to be able to afford a private jet out here in Miami. Let's see what he has to say. Excuse me, sir. Quick question for you, man. Is this your jet? Yeah, of course it's my jet. And what do you do for a living to be able to afford a private jet out here in Miami, Florida? I've been running my own business for 30 years. Actually. Actually. I wouldn't lie to you. And over these 30 years, what's the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Tens of millions of dollars. I mean, I've had sales in excess of $100 million for companies I've run and exited successfully. And I go all over the country just asking business owners their advice to young entrepreneurs. Is it cool if we ask you a few questions for the channel? 100%, dude. You got courage to ask questions, I will answer. Okay. We can go right on here if you want. Is that cool? 100%. Let's run it. Let's do it. Let's Come run on. It. One of your businesses, like, what was the most that you made in a single year? Best year I've had was last year, and we did seven hundred and fifty-two million in rev for the year in twenty-three. As a multiple nine-figure entrepreneur, what has been the best financial advice that you ever received? You know who Arthur Blank is? Very familiar. Okay, I was at a meeting fourteen years ago, and I was making some money and trying to figure some stuff out. And he asked me if I had any questions. And what's weird about people is they don't have no questions, dude. If you let, leave me in a room with somebody doing better than me, I will ask some questions for like literally until it. They, they have to tell me to shut up. So I'm asking him some questions and he's answering. Nobody else is asking questions. And I said, sir, if you could give me one advice on why you're able, because at the time I was, we were talking about Home Depot. Why are you able to launch Home Depot into such an amazing company? He said, first of all, every business opportunity I looked at, I made sure that I always fed my business, right? I didn't want to starve it. He said, in Home Depot, while I knew we were going to have very small margins and I knew it would take a while to make money, once we started making money, a little bit of a lot would have been like more than enough. We'd had no problems. So he started talking about that concept. And I started to learn patience from a lot of these guys. And then I had a guy who's a billionaire 10, 12 times over, and he said, take every business opportunity, approach it like a three-legged stool. I said, okay, what does that mean? He said, every decision you make, any decision you're making has to be great for your client or your consumer. Second, it has to be great for your agent or your employee, your independent contractor, your consultant. Okay, I said, what's third? He said, it can't harm the company. He said, but that'll take patience because most people run their business where they make every decision that's great for them. Whatever scraps are left, they, but they don't tend to be sustainable because other guys are doing it your way. In the life insurance deal, even though we did that kind of rev last year, dude, the first three years, I wasn't paying myself a lot. And a lot of people get into business to get rich right away. I got into business to get free and I knew eventually I'd become wealthy. Rich, you, you could say, I make, you've made 400 grand a year, you're rich. I wanted to not worry about money. That's been the best business lesson I've ever learned because most most people get into business and after about 60, 90, 120 days, two years, they're frustrated. You know, everybody used to always say, what's the first rule of business? Stay in business. First couple of years, is a, but everybody says it's a grind until they're in it. And then they're like, I can't buy that $400,000 car. And it's like, okay, Tommy, welcome to the real world. And I'm always like, dude, I don't know. I don't, I ran my business. I ran it. I took advi business advice from people that were in a better place than me. But personally, anybody around me that was talking, I wasn't listening to nothing. I mean, if people are weighing you down, dude. You get the anchor off. Like if you if you're a good swimmer, if you can't swim and you jump in the water, I will jump in to help you. The minute you grab me and I think you're bringing me down, I'm gonna punch you in the face as hard as I can. I'm gonna swim back to safety. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna call 911. And then what happened? I'm like I jumped in to help him and he started trying to drown me too. I'm out. What's been your secret to sales? How have you been able to consistently land massive deals with huge clients over all these years? What's your secret to selling in a competitive industry? Why do you think most people struggle with sales? I don't think they believe in themselves. That's, hey, that's a good answer because that's part of it. And then that lack of belief causes them not to work hard. The biggest thing I want to sell people is belief in themselves. You give me a product, if people need it, and I believe in it, I will sell it. I don't give a shit what it is. It doesn't matter. You go sell these shoes. I'd be like, are they good shoes? Damn, I'll sell them. Sell the shirt. I'll sell that shirt off of your back to him. You can build the belief in yourself, but people don't want to work hard. The greatest thing for your self-image by far is work. That's the greatest thing. So weirdly enough, I became really good at sales because I called more people. I wasn't going to take no for an answer. I wasn't worried about being judged. So I didn't think it was that competitive because most people won't work. I always tell people, when I started making money, my friends are like, yo, you think you're better than us behind my back, obviously. And I'd be like, I don't think I'm better than you. I just want more out of life than you. I'm not any better than you. You can, hey, sadly enough, you can do exactly what I'm doing.